We frequently hear from some Reformed Christians that worship is warfare, that we are destroying the enemy through worship, that our worship on Sunday morning ascends into the heavenlies, and that our singing the Psalms carries with it the conversion of the nations. And this is all true, and this is all good, but it is not enough. It is not enough to merely worship and to merely understand that worship is warfare. There is an important adjective describing worship that makes these propositions true. Does anybody know what that adjective is? Faithful. Faithful worship. We hear from conservative Christians how it is our duty to worship God in this time of, this, of the coronavirus hysteria, that we must worship God no matter what. There's kind of this uh, intense pushback against the state when the state is coming to push, uh, shut down churches. Um, but the operating assumption is that their worship is faithful worship, and it's wrongly assumed. They must reevaluate their worship. They must reevaluate why God is shutting down their worship. And some might say, well, persecution is just the way it is. That's what we're supposed to expect. We should welcome it. But we're not an infant civilization coming into the beginning stages of Christianity. If we were, it would make much more sense that the civil government was uh, shutting down uh, Christian worship. It would be like the civil government shutting down uh, the Christian worship in the Roman Empire the first few centuries. Or like the Christians in China now, where Christianity is beginning to take a foothold. But our situation is not like China. Our situation is not like the beginning stages of the Christian Roman Empire. We are more like unfaithful Jews during the Babylonian captivity. And the Babylonians, the unbelievers, are destroying the temple. So, did the Jews have a right to worship at the temple during the captivity? Or was God being faithful to his word and diminishing his people? Humiliating his people, scourging his people with the nations and shutting their worship down because his people were unfaithful in their worship. Jeremiah's words to his zealous Jewish brothers speak to us too. Jeremiah spoke to his brothers who also thought worship was warfare and worship was in, uh, important, but then they failed to understand that all important adjective faithful. Jeremiah says this, Hear the word of the Lord, all you Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place or walk after other gods in your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. And we are in the same position as these. Worship is warfare. But it's unsuccessful warfare when it's unfaithful worship. Conservative Christians of all stripes are covenant breakers. They are idolaters. They idolize unlawful marriages. They give unlawful marriages more respect than the words of God. They ignore the necessity of covenantal faithfulness. They, mili they militate against those who call out unlawful marriages like Herodias did with John the Baptist. They are, if we could personify them in a person, a vengeful, malicious woman, jealous for their unlawful marriages like Herodias. So they're covenant breakers and God judges covenant breakers. So is worship warfare? Yes, but merely worshiping is not enough. We have to worship in spirit and truth as our Lord instructs us. And when we worship with unrepentant adulterers in our assemblies, we are worshiping in the flesh and lies. God does not honor that kind of worship, and so we are unsuccessful in our worshiping warfare. But God has shown us how to dwell once again in the land that he has given us. He has shown us the ancient ways, so let us repent and follow them once again. This reminds us of our need to confess. 